Hello there and welcome to this new data science case study where I will show you the data science questions that you can practice and take your skills to a next level with this case study. So this case study as you can see is a rheumatoid arthritis clinical trial. So it's the data case study which is related to medical field. And uh, a quick description about uh, this case study is that it's a rheumatoid self-assessment score for 302 patients measured on a five-level ordinal response scale at three, at three follow-up times. So a lot of technical things, but um, one of the important thing is uh, the rheumatoid arthritis. So let's see this what it is. All right. So when you search just for the term rheumatoid, you will see in Google and search like this, which is quite self-explanatory. So rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory disorder that can affect more than just your joints. In some people, the condition can damage a wide variety of body systems, including the skin, eyes, lungs, heart, and blood vessels. And, you know, this is some of the images which has been given. And uh, if you want to do further more research, there are some questions, what are the first sign and then so on and so forth, like what are the four stages and things like that. But what we want is based on the treatment or the clinical trial uh, which has been given on those patients, we want to do the data, we want to basically apply the data science principle on that and uh, do the prediction or classification based on how the case study is moving ahead. All right, so let's move back to our case study. So before I show you the questions, let's also review the data set. So here is a data set, which is an arthritis data set and uh, that you can find in the description uh, for a given folder. And in this folder, you can search for the arthritis file, uh, which is a CSV file. And uh, the description is here. So the first variable is ID. So which is nothing but the patient identifier. Uh, the Y variable is basically the self-assessment score of uh, rheumatoid arthritis measured on a five scale ordinal response scale. So those uh, five level scale is like one, two, three, four, five. And in some cases, the values are missing. Then you have uh, the sex, which is uh, coded as one for female and two for male. So whether a male or female. So you can look at from various perspective uh, for these this y variable like how this is related to the sex variable similarly age age is a self-explanatory age of the patient and then the treatment group variable whether they have it's been coded as one for the place spoke group and two for the drug group so that's also one of the thing uh, which which is part of the clinical trial that one is the actual group where the drug is given and second is just the place book group. So after that you have a baseline assessment and uh, that's basically self assessment score of the rheumatoid arthritis at the baseline. And then finally follow up time recorded in months. So you have like values as one, three and five. So this is your uh, quick information about the data set. And now let's look at the questions. All right, let's move on. So that's at a high level, I'm showing you the objective or what we will really trying to do. So evaluate the effectiveness of the drug ornafin versus the place both therapy for the treatment of RA. The repeated response variable is basically self-assessment score of the rheumatoid arthritis, which is nothing but the Y, which you could see even in the data set. Now, the first question, very straightforward. First of all, you need to import the relevant libraries to read the data. After that, you need to read the CSV and uh, drop the drop or ignore the column, first column, which is nothing but just a serial number. And the file name, as I mentioned, is basically the arthritis.csv which you can find it in the description for a given folder link. And in that folder, you can you should look for the arthritis.csv file. Then you need to check the shape of the data set and it should have 906 rows and seven columns. All right, let's see the next question. 
So next question is, what is the key objective of the case study? And hint is this. So how you can further translate in your own language or a little bit in more detail oriented. If let's say you need to uh, show it to your examiner or somebody who is taking an interview, giving you this case study, how you would further interpret it. So from that perspective, you need to think. And then you need the data collected in the given Excel file is grouped under which data class and quick hint I have given is uh, cross-sectional data or a time series data or a longitudinal data. So this will, this uh, once you have identified this, will give the interviewer or anyone uh, who is looking at uh, your case study or your solution will have a good impression about your skills that uh, yes, not only just uh, straightforward uh, libraries implementation and uh, code implementation, you know a good, good you have a good knowledge about the data as well then you have uh, third question is what kind of data measurement is the response variable y or what sort of data uh, type that the response variable y hold whether it is uh, nominal ordinal interval or ratio so this way if you don't know what are those you will get a good once you will do a little bit of research you will find the good information about it then you need to plot a basic scatter plot matrix for the data set giving you the good information about how the variables are related to each other. Then you need to summarize the entire data set with all the variables and its data types and then convert the TRT which is treatment group variable into the factor in R or a category in Python to show two groups as the variable definition. So one is the place and another one is where the actual medicine was given. Then what are those, what are the two groups in TRT variable? Show the frequency table and plot part uh, chart which is displaying the count of each group. So it's basically, you know, it's straightforward the histogram and the bar chart. Uh, that you need to show for or the bar chart you need to show for the TRT variable for the two different groups and then I would also recommend that uh, go a next level and uh, plot both the groups histograms in a one single chart with uh, some sort of transparency in the color variable so that is nothing but the value of alpha that you need to set and with that you will be able to see in one single chart the difference between the two, dif two different groups. Then which age recorded at the baseline had the maximum clinical trials by the by count in the data set. So just some more information uh, and more interpretation from the data that we are having. Then draw a box plot for age versus TRT the treatment group variable and comment the observations. So your observations like uh, average or the minimum maximum or if there are any outliers like one particular treatment variable is giving you the more outlier as compared to the others all of those observations will going go in a long way in terms of uh, your interpretation and understanding of the data set after that you need to create a two-way frequency table for trt versus sex variable so treatment group and sex variable will give you a good understanding and a good interpretation of uh, how the treatment and sex uh, variables are related then you need to plot the two frequency table uh, in a bar chart now you need to think and you need to experiment whether uh, a simple or a group or a stack bar chart what sort of bar chart will going to make a lot of sense so i suggest that you do some experiment when you are plotting this all right so after that plot the each versus baseline variables on a box plot and comment the observation again very similar to the question number eight and again you will try to identify the uh, the information from this box plot so here we observe the data is repeated for each variable uh, of each of the scale in y so what do you infer on the modeling approach so based on the data so it can be either continuous or it can be uh, repeated or a categorical or a discrete whatever way you want to say that in in the technical language but uh, once you see that that uh, it's being repeated or it's a discrete variable then what sort of uh, modeling approach 
uh, is coming in your mind so you need to write that then uh, i would like you to research a little bit about the I iit is one of the things which you should know so does the iit assumption hold good here in especially in the case when the data is repeated or that variable is discrete and if not then why how to overcome if it is a violation explain the different modeling techniques that can be used here so just to increase your knowledge in terms uh, by looking at this particular term and if it is coming in the interview you need to explain about it uh, assumptions or when does it hold code or what are its assumptions or violation of assumptions then uh, what is a gee model and what are its assumptions so probably in the last step or the last question you may have done some research with that you may have figured it out uh, that gee model will going to work so what is first of all the gee model i would like to know and uh, what are its assumptions then if above model can be applied to this data set what is a package to be used in r or python or if you are in matlab or in some other language like julia then what package you will implement then if the dependent variable is normally distributed and no correlation with responses are assumed so i am throwing you a lot of technical stuff here the ge estimates are the same as so you need to think in terms of linear regression it's a very simple question but you know just throwing you how situation can become like little bit more complex and uh, uh, how interviewer or maybe examiner if you are studying then throw you some complex terms for the simple uh, problems then what is the difference between the glmm and ge model like mixed effects versus marginal models so that's also a very key question in this type of question in this type of case studies then if the response variable y were not repeated and multi class ordinal level data which model would you have been chosen or which model you would choose in that case if the y variable is not repeated all right uh, fit the model using the package as specified in the question number 14 uh and the interpret the findings related to the significance so this is the model that we i said or i asked in this uh, question about 14 and finally for mixed effects or glm glmm model which package and function to be used to implement in r and python so that's my final question but the the, the search doesn't end here what you need to do is uh, after you have done the glm after you have let's say implement the glmm model you need to evaluate the output of the both gee and glmm model do the prediction on the test data and then identify uh you know whether this is something which is making sense uh, which particular model is making sense and uh, also since uh, you will see that uh, you will look at the precision the recall and all all of those sort of stuff then how the model or what sort of uh, metric you need to give more weight uh, when you look at this problem in hand which is an arthritis problem so something like uh, you will give more to more importance to the precision or to the recall or to the or any other metric that that is part of this entire ecosystem so search doesn't end here like i said but uh, this is just a small case study if uh, to to broader your domain knowledge and uh, give you the clinical trials related case study so that uh, you can know what sort of models how the you know data science technique really work or implemented in this domain so by the time if you are ending this is case study you will have a good idea about uh, what uh, how how you need to implement uh, or how you need to work in a situation like this and then you know get your work started so that's about it and if you need solution file it's in the description uh, for both r and python and now i'll meet you in the new video with the new case study